What's going on everyone? It's your boy Big D here. It's time to review Aquarius Season 1, Episode 8, titled Sick City. This is a spoiler review. If you've not seen the episode, go to NBC.com slash Aquarius. Watch the full episode there. It should take me less than two minutes to recap the episode, give you my pros and cons, and final score. Hey guys, real quick, uh, uh reportably, uh, uh reportably, it's been reported messing up here. Been reported that Aquarius is moving to Saturday nights also with a show that I review with NBC Hannibal. So effective immediately it's gonna be moving to Saturday nights. So yikes. Okay. But Aquarius has been renewed for a season two, so we're, we're, I guess we're fine with that. But they could always I guess cancel and be like, no 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 season two. Actually we changed our minds, but I don't think they want to do that because then the fans will be like, Yeah, where were you? Anyway, let's get right to it, guys. So they're searching the files of Caroline because Caroline, this girl, has been missing for seven years. Sam and uh, a few others are searching the files. Hodiak is to help uh, a father who is a... Uh, he's having trouble at his local church. You know, the priest is... He, seemed, he, he accuses the other priest of stealing money. So Charlie is singing, by the way. I, uh, I love it. I love how Char uh, Charles sings, man. He's he's not the. He, I mean, he acts like he, everyone's like, oh man, oh. There's there's Charlie. He's singing. He's the best singer in the world. No, he's not. But uh, he's pretty interesting. Anyway, he breaks the string, man, because he's nervous and he's like, ah. And he gets up and uh, because the re record uh, record guy is there, he's like hearing Charlie sing and everything. Emma, uh, best do something. He's like, Emma, you best do something. You best keep him here. So she screws up, and I really like when she's talking because she's like uh, Emma's like Charlie's love. His love is everything, and I'm like, oh, shit. That's some intense stuff right there. His love is everything. Mm, no sir. Anyway, Emma says uh, bye to Ken, her dad. She literally doesn't even say bye, dad. She's like, bye, Ken, and walks away. Of course, Ken wants to get his daughter back and everything, and he's like. Well, you could be legally free now or something if you sign this, and she just kind of walks away. Char uh, Charlie's men work for Johnny now. Of course, Johnny talks like this. Oh, yeah, my father, he's a real badass, man. he take you out right away. <laughs> yeah, look at me. I'm going to comb my head, you know? He talks like that. And they're at the Pussycat Place because apparently 60s, 70s, people want to be at the Pussycat Place. Why not? So, we find out that the priest does gamble. Not the father, but the priest. He gambles, and Manson is so angry, dude. The record guy left, and literally he goes up to everyone in the room, and he, he's like, You know, you yeah, smile, and everything. He's just going crazy, and he's like, Two smiley faces, H! You know, he's like really yelling at Emma and everything, and he's yelling at everyone. He's pissed off, and of course, they give him LSD. Like, everyone's like, Whoa, you know. The smiley faces to make you smile. So that's going on. And anyway, um, I really, I really like this. Remember, uh, I think I don't remember. But she was like, "What time is it now?" And Mindy is freaking out. This girl named Mindy. She's not a main character. She's just a person at Manson's house. She's freaking out. And he's really like, Manson's like, "Where's Emma?" Where's Emma? You know, it's like freaking out and everything. And uh, Emma leaves. Emma leaves Charlie. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Teenage problems. You go to Charlie. No, Charlie, help me. Don't let them take me. Oh, you crawl back to him. And now you're running away from him. What are you doing? Make up your mind, Emma. Anyway, that goes on. The priest is strangled. Oh, excuse me. The father is strangled. Uh, Man, he's he's so nice, and when Sam hears the news, David Duchovny's acting. He's just, I love it because he's he's not want to break down in front of everyone, but he's kind of like, and Brian's like, "Hey, are you okay?" Yeah, I'm just a, a lot of work, you know. So he's he kind you can see his eye and everything right there in the camera angle, and it's just beautifully done. And um, so yeah, dude, that sucks that he died. That who strangled him? I guess um, the gambling people went and went to strangle him. But I think the priest knew, and he didn't want to get in trouble, because uh, the priest walks in, and literally Sam hits the priest. He's like, boom, and he gets escorted out of uh, the church. So Johnny is killed. Uh, that was easy. Johnny walks in, and, uh, you know, you just want to kill the guy the way. He's, he's really annoying. He walks in, he's like, what are you doing here? 
and he literally just gets a headshot. Of course, uh, Charlie's friend, the biker guy with the mustache, shot him, and Brian just covered in blood, dude. And he's like, Whew, just covered in blood, and I'm like, holy crap, like. I did not like I thought like this guy's probably gonna die because you know the camera angles and you've seen a million TV shows and you know something's gonna go down because it just doesn't feel right it feels like something's gonna go down like in a horror movie oh they're playing music something's gonna go down they're playing so when Johnny walked in hey what are you doing and they didn't show Johnny talk say and they just turned Poof. that scared me for a moment I was like oh damn that's not cool man so uh, Ken is in a field of rocks, and possibly he's at a grave site. I guess that's where Caroline has been missing for seven years. He's uh, just getting rocks, and I believe there's a grave with a skeleton there. Overall, what did I think about this Aquarius episode? Let me get started with my cons first. This episode is slow. It is a very slow episode, and every, every episode of a show is... There's a slow part, okay, whatever. But they're slow, and then there's... NBC slow. Like, I stopped watching The Blacklist. Hey, great show. Yes, I know James Spader. And yes, oh, yes, James Spader. Amazing. Praise him. But they're slow. And then there's NBC slow. And I'm, mean, oh, you know, super slow. So this had one of those. I didn't really like the first half. I think up until, um,. Up to when we find out the priest is gambling and everything and Manson is angry with the two smiley faces. Up until then, but before that, it was really just... I didn't really enjoy the first half. Sure, there's a few good parts to it, but just... It, the first half wasn't the best. The second half was. Uh, not much emotion for Hodiak, man. Even though I want Hodiak to go to his house or something and just cry. Because this guy, you know, he was close to the father. Not really close, 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 but he just talked to him recently and everything, and they, we saw him a few times in episodes, and I want him to, like, smash a wall or something or get super angry, but uh, I still think David Duchovny is freaking amazing, man. But, uh, still, I want more emotion for Hodiak there, and there are a few boring scenes. Not gonna lie. There are a few boring scenes. Those are the cons, now the pros. Johnny's dead. Hallelujah. He's out of the way. No worries about him anymore. Yeah, my father this, my father that. Mm-hmm, yeah, okay. He's dead. Manson, dude, of course. Uh, Githin Anthony, I totally got his name wrong, but the man who plays Charles Manson in this show is fantastic. He deserves deserves an Emmy nomination by the end of the season. Uh, he's freaking awesome. I love the way he sings, and then the string breaks, and just the camera angle when it looks up at him, and Manson's going crazy. So he's already crazy, of course. I love the second half, of course. Um, we don't get to see much Charmaine. Charmaine's not even in this episode, but I love the second half for some reason. Now, uh, it's just really interesting, and the way, you know, when Emma leaves and Mindy's freaking out, all that, just a little bit more better. Uh, the priest, the whole priest thing, that was pretty intense. And even priest gambling, dude, come on, you're better than that. Uh, it's emotional. I did get really sad when I heard the priest died. Like, I wanted to cry. A tear didn't fall. Sadly, I wanted a tear to fall. I was like, come on, come on, come on, tear. But it never ended up falling. But I did have that emotional feeling connection towards it. And the dialogue in this episode, again, like, his love is everything. And, you know, where's Emma? And th there's more dialogue to it, like, when a... Like, the dialogue to the songs that Charles Manson sings in this episode, they're pretty okay. I mean, they're 70, 60-ish, you know, it's supposed to be that way. But still, yeah, rock on, man. Anyway, I'm going to give this Aquarius episode a solid B. It's a good episode overall. It's not great. It's not bad. But secondarily, a C plus. It's towards the okay. It's good to okay, more on the verge of just there. Um... I can't wait for next week's episode. Charmaine is back. We have a little uh, Charmaine. Mm. But still, comment down below. Let me know what do you guys think about this Aquarius episode. And I'll see you uh, next week for more. May the Spock be with you. Always.